Notice how casually I'm sitting. That's to denote the casualness that I'm approaching this video with, mainly because I don't think I know any ENFJs in my personal life. So here's my disclaimer. If you're an ENFJ or you know any ENFJs, comment below and tell me where I'm wrong. The idea of seeing potential within a person and then influencing them towards that potential is an extremely appealing idea for ENFJs. Having extroverted feeling as your dominant function makes you kind of by definition people-centric. ENFJs are able to alter their presentation and demeanor to perfectly match a given audience or setting or situation. FE is very chameleon-esque. However, it's not just for its own sake. Having FE and NI working together in conjunction as your top two functions means that you can adapt yourself to the people around you to help achieve a particular goal. Because regardless of the many qualities that introverted intuition has, it seems to always have a goal-orientated approach to life. I think that this is what has led ENFJs to be synonymous with mentorship or guidance and teaching. They are people-centric and goal-orientated. In a sense, the most natural way to express that desire is to have visions of people and where they might be, and then to slowly and subtly bring that into existence. This capacity to exert influence on people, which they are exceptionally good at, can, for obvious reasons, go bad. If an ENFJ is damaged in some way or is just not particularly morally inclined, they can be extremely dangerous. That social smoothness that they use to morph into the ideal persona for a given moment can flow over into deception and disingenuousness. I often hear ENTPs and ESTPs being described as the types who make the best con artists, but I'd put ENFJs right up there too. Extroverted sensing has a very direct relationship with the world. This means that ENFJs can often come across as quite grounded and realistic, despite being an intuitive type. They'll find a great deal of relief from indulging in the physical and sensory pleasures. Their third slot SE actually makes them quite adaptable, much like the ENTJ. Despite both being very planful, they can both adjust on the fly when needed, and aren't taken off guard by chaotic situations like an SE inferior type would be. I've also seen third slot SE manifest itself as being happy to enjoy and sometimes flaunt materialistic things. Introverted thinking inferior is kind of a curious thing. It often shows up in a lack of confidence in their own ability to logically analyze things and break things down. This is not to say that ENFJs aren't logical or intelligent, quite the opposite. In a strange way, they don't always need to develop it. Because when you have the ability to charm and seduce people into joining your team, then simply recruiting a high TI user can solve this problem. So ENFJs can often get by purely on the basis of their interpersonal skills. Hearing arguments between high and low TI users tends to go the same way. The TI user will try to analyze the logical implications of the statement the person has just made and attempt to show how that statement doesn't have internal consistency. You said this, therefore this must be the case. And this is not the case. Therefore, your initial statement was wrong. The low TI user, or high FE user, will often say things like, you're not hearing me, or you're not getting me. Often not really worrying that much about the logical consistency, but more the emotional landscape that they are painting. ENFJs have introverted sensing polar, so you can think of it as the function they struggle the most with. Introverted sensing is associated with a few different things depending on which systems you're using. These include being detail-orientated, being unaccepting of traditionalism, being unaware of their own physical needs, having a bad memory for specific examples, and devaluing comfort. It's the last point that stands out for me. SI has a homeostatic 
quality to it. I picture it as someone sitting down in their favorite PJs on the couch with a hot chocolate rewatching one of their favorite TV shows or movies, making sure to place the pillow in exactly the right place to cause maximum bliss. ENFJs and ENTJs have this desire to push themselves intensely, sometimes at the expense or neglect of their own physical and sometimes mental health. When they're in go-getting, goal-orientated mode, taking time to stop for TLC reasons is kind of a non-starter. My small piece of advice is that sometimes doing nothing is actually the best thing to do. Recharging and resetting and the changes in perspective that can often give you will help you achieve your goals much more quickly in the long run.